Joe Kuhn here, the reliability man, bridging the gap between best practices and your reality. Today's topic brought to you by Lean Driven Reliability is under the guidance of, or under the heading of Tim Wood. Uh, remember, we've talked about this before. If you looked at my other videos, we're going to talk about over-processing, the over-processing waste, waste and how it applies to maintenance. But first, if you like what you're seeing, hit su subscribe and hit uh, the like that tells me people are listening and encourages me to send out more videos okay first of all let's talk about an example okay a uh, real life example hydraulic unit in really a lights out facility that controlled the manipulation of equipment uh, to uh, store to bring in and store large blocks called anodes in a factory that i used to work okay that uh, asset was over 50 years old and was uh, the uh, maintenance practices were developed over years. So when it was first started, you know, 50 years ago, you just had time-based PMs. And you had weekly PMs, you had monthly PMs, and you had annual PMs associated with that asset. So doing a little math here, the weekly PMs were two craftsmen, two hours times 52 weeks in a year, 208 hours. Monthly, we had two craftsmen, took the equipment down for eight hours once a, a month times 12, 192. Annual PMs had three people working 16 hours, two shifts, th did that once a year, 48 hours, or 448 hours were invested in that asset. Now, here's the key. We had some emotional PMs, okay? Emo what are emotional PMs? These are PMs that are done on fear, not based on failure mode, okay? Uh, we had an event happen, and the reaction of uh, the organization was, we don't want to have that happen again. So regardless of whether it was based on failure mode, we want to do, we want to change the oil every single month, 96 hours. We want inspection daily. It was 20 minutes for, for one person daily. That's 110 hours. Total investment of 558 hours a year into maintaining that asset. That, that, that blew up the back backlog. That was just what was done on this particular asset. Okay, now PDM comes along, condition monitoring. Got some new tools, new toys out there to play with. We added a vibe route, one hour, uh, once a month, 12 months, 12 hours. Oil analysis, 12. So a total of 24 PDM hours annually. So you add up the investment in that asset, 558 and 24, you get 582 hours were invested in that. What's important to recognize is we added PDM or condition monitoring to our time-based maintenance and never looked at them as one, okay? So what should you be doing? You should, you know, the textbook will tell you, and this is my break from uh, uh, best practices, hey, we should do a FMAA on this uh, asset. Well, the problem is at my plant, we had close to 10,000 assets. So you organize the people, uh, and the, the data to have an FMEA on an asset like this, you're, you're going to invest two and a half days or something like that. So you only can knock off one asset at a week. Best case, do the math times 10,000. You don't have that many years. Okay. So what do we do to get control of this quickly? I'm going to talk about that in just a second. So make sure I didn't cover anything. So if you go in on this particular one and say, Hey, let's just, we're going to go all in on our condition monitoring. That's what we're about. We're after science and data. You can go in on this one here. We go in and with 24 hours. Say you do end up having an oil change uh, every six months. You have to, have to do an oil change. You know, it's not, you're not going to, you're going to find problems with this. Hopefully that's what, that's what you got it here. And that even jumps up to 40 hours. You do the math, 40 hours is your new PM program versus 582. That's a 93% reduction, 93% in your hours that you invested on this. Now you're going, you may have some corrective act, corrective work. You're going to have corrective work up here, but a 93% reduction in your PM hours on just this one asset. You multiply this by 50 assets, 60 assets, 70 assets, 5,000 assets at your location. You're going to end up with dramatic savings in your labor that you can choose to reinvest. Uh, in you know, expanding your PDM, expanding your planners, number of supervisors you got, the amount of planned work you've got, the amount of contractors you use, big impact. So given this newfound knowledge that we have problems with our existing uh, equipment maintenance plans, uh, what do we do about it? How do we organize about it? 
around it. PM Kaizen. PM Kaizen 1, PM Kaizen 2, PM Kaizen 3. This is not the method. This is a method that has worked at uh, many of our locate many of the locations I've been to uh, and been responsible for. So in PM Kaizen 1, what you're doing is you're looking for gross errors in the frequency of the PM. You know, should it be done once a week, once a month, once a year? The duration of the PM, is it a two hour PM? Does it take two hours for a human to do that? Or should it be one hour? Should it be 30 minutes? Should it be longer? And how, many, uh, how much manpower you have assigned to that job? So really, uh, does, and also does PDM cover it? Should we stop the time-based work, which is where most of the hours are, uh, and then you know monitor the change? This PM Kaizen 1, what I'm looking for here and have done is you look at individually, each person is, is charged with eliminating stupid. This means you got 20 seconds to look at a PM and decide, do I have some gross errors? We're not looking to change the frequency from 20 days to 22 days, but should it be once a quarter or once a week? Should it be once a month or once every six months? Look for gross errors, okay? That's PM Kaizen 1. Again, 20 seconds by an individual. I recommend getting off site, printing out all the PMs, having a group of eight to 10 people look at them and just rack it, you know, go through them just in a fever pace, looking for really gross, gross errors. You're not doing an FMEA, you're looking for really mistakes that uh, were great 20 years ago, 40 years ago, but given all the, the, uh, the elements of the equipment maintenance plan, just makes no sense at all. PM Kaizen 1. PM Kaizen 2, take about two minutes per PM as a group. So have three to four people in a group looking at each PM, review it quickly. Again, still looking at frequency, duration, and manpower, how it's laid out. Does it make sense? Take a couple minutes. PM Kaizen 3, 3 is really just the reliability engineer gets to decide. They're the ones that really own the equipment maintenance plan. Maybe we need to do an FMEA. Maybe we need, he needs to make a change, make the decision himself. The important thing to note here, and this is, this is a problem at most locations, is people don't want to stand up and take charge of the PM. You know, and they say, hey, that's the reliability engineer's job. Well, that, that's, a, that's a tight funnel to go every PM through, even if it's ridiculous. The PM Kaizen 1 and 2 go after the ridiculous. So, hey, what kind of results have I seen from this? Great idea. What kind of results? The plant I was at, over 100,000 hours. Now, it's a big plant. 100,000 hours were taken out in PM Kaizen uh, 1, 2, and 3 combined. That's 50 FTEs. Uh, at at, at a, uh, a conglomeration of plants, uh, I'd say the average was around 50,000 hours. Each plant, each plant, that's 25 FTEs. And then the lowest, absolute lowest plant, and this was uh, uh, over two dozen, over two dozen plant. The lowest was 20,000 hours, which is 10 FTEs. What can you do with 10 FTEs? You know, in my suggestion, I've, I've talked on other videos about credibility before you ask for something, give something before you ask for something, is say, hey, if you've come up with an idea to, and you realistically get 10 FTEs, uh, that you now have free. Hey, if a couple, if three, four of them retire, hey, cash that in, but ask for the money back for the balance of that to reinvest in, in doubling down on your PDM team. So maybe your, your, uh, your PDM team only has two people in it. Well, hey, you know, let's bring that to four. Let's bring that to six. Let's add some lube text. Let's add ultrasonics to this. You know, reinvest. Maybe you put in a lube room. Maybe you want to spend $100,000 on a lube room, but you've you've given back $500,000. And you say, can I have 100000 of that to um, uh, put into a lube room or invest in more people? I'm telling you, from that position of, um, of credibility, you can get just about anything you want. So your simple action for this week from Lean Driven Reliability, your simple action is conduct a PM Kaizen. One, level one, that uh, takes 20 seconds each PM. Look at it, look for the ridiculous in frequency, duration, and manpower. Does PDM cover it? And then make a quick decision on whether you should do time-based if you're doing that. Why change oil once a month if you're doing oil analysis? A lot of money here. Folks, remember, if you like what you're seeing, hit subscribe. Thanks.